Hi folks, G3 here. Welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Today's episode is a green news update. So I'm going to share with you a few news articles that I've seen that I think you might find useful. So let's go. First up, it's news that a UK supermarket is scrapping best before dates to try and help with food wastage. This news I found on ecowatch.com. I'll include a link to all the articles down below for you. So this is Waitrose and they're looking to get rid of the best before dates on fresh fruit and vegetables. And this is starting in September. The staffed owned grocery store will do away with dates on fresh foods like cucumbers, lettuce, and peppers in the hopes that customers will use their own discretion in determining whether food has gone bad. The expectation is that the strategy will keep consumers from discarding food that is still good, thus reducing food waste, Waitrose said. They've quoted Maria Rompani, Director of Sustainability and Ethics at Waitrose parent company, John Lewis Partnership. Now she said, UK households throw away 4.5 million tonnes of edible food every year, meaning that all the energy and resources used in food production is wasted. By removing best before dates from our products, we want our customers to use their own judgment to decide whether a product is good to eat or not, which in turn will increase its chances of being eaten and not becoming waste. Now, it's estimated by the government's Waste Resources Action Programme, known as RAP, that the amount of fresh food products saved in the UK by the removal of best before dates could equal 7 million shopping baskets worth of food. I mean, that's, that's huge. RAP said that the foods that are most wasted in the country are potatoes, bread and milk. Now, the bread and milk doesn't surprise me, but I am a little surprised by the potatoes. But I guess that if they start sprouting, people are probably going to throw them away when they don't necessarily need to. You can cut away uh, the bit that's gone green and still use it. Best before dates are not the same as used by dates, so I need to make that clear. The purpose of the best before dates are that they are to be used as a guide to the consumer regarding food quality, whilst the used by dates are intended to indicate the safety of a product. Now, Waitrose isn't the only supermarket scrapping best before dates. In 2018, Tesco got rid of them on more than 100 fresh foods, and Marks and Spencers also recently did away with the dates on more than 300 fruit and vegetables. The removal of the dates is intended not only to help the environment by reducing the carbon impact of food production, but also to lower the costs for consumers and the supermarkets themselves. Now, Rompani also said, by using up existing fresh food in our homes, we can also save on our weekly household food shop, which is becoming an increasingly pressing concern for many. Now, grocery chain Morrison's has said that it plans to urge customers to employ a sniff test for milk instead of use by dates. Now, according to experts at RAP, the best before dates on fresh fruit and vegetables add to the climate crisis and aren't needed. Now, Catherine David, who's collaboration and change director at RAP, said, best before dates on fruit and veg are unnecessary and create food waste because they get in the way of people using their judgment when food is good to still eat. And that they are absolutely delighted by the move from Waitrose, which will help stop good food ending up in the bin. Absolutely, that seems like a great idea to me. People should be using their judgment when it comes to the fresh fruit and vegetables that they're buying and storing. It's certainly what people used to do. You look at the fruit and veg, you gauge from your experience whether it's still usable, and then use it in your food. Now, obviously, people should also be using the fruit and vegetables that they bought in a timely manner. It might help you, perhaps, to create a plan of what you're going to be doing for the week with regards to your, your food. You could easily just maybe do it on a, a chalkboard or, or something like that, or maybe if you're sort of super geeky like me, you might be doing an Excel spreadsheet to show what foods you're planning to do for each evening and what items you're going to be using for it, that might help you. But um, certainly this seems like a good plan from Waitrose and the other supermarkets that have already implemented it, of dropping those best before dates and letting people use their judgment. Good move. Next up, it's an article from Guardian Environment, and they're reporting that England's gardeners are going to be banned from using peat-based compost. And they're saying that sales of peat-based compost for private use are going to be banned within 18 months. Now, as well as the carbon capture and storage, peatlands provide habitat to some of the UK's most threatened wildlife, 
and also filter water and prevent flooding downstream. But a combination of draining them for agricultural use, burning to create the right habitat for game birds, and harvesting for compost means just 13% are in a near perfect state. Now the Department for Food, Environment and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, said on Saturday that the sale of peat-based compost will be banned in garden centres and supermarkets within 18 months. In 2011, the government agreed that the horticultural industry should voluntarily bring about an end to the use of peat, but by 2021 it still accounted for 29.8% of commercially sold compost. A public consultation which received 5,000 responses found that 95% of people supported the ban, and DEFRA admitted the voluntary Voluntary approach had not succeeded. Bagged peat sold by retailers accounts for 70% of the peat sold in the UK, according to DEFRA. Now, at the moment, the ban doesn't count for those working in the horticultural trade, and that's because there are going to be discussions with the industry bodies around about September time. A spokesman for the department acknowledged that landowners would still have the right to extract peat but said the ban would in time bring about a reduction in demand. She added that the government was aiming to help mineral planning authorities, usually a department within a county council, unitary authority or national park, to modernise existing licences in order to bring about an end to peat extraction. The government has a target of restoring 35,000 hectares of peatland by 2025 as part of its commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. In addition to the newly announced ban, a further £11 million has been awarded to six projects projects working to restore 7,000 hectares of peatland. Now, the Environment Minister Richard Benyon said, the actions announced today mark a new chapter in the story of our iconic peatlands, safeguarding their long-term health and vitality as part of our commitments to achieve net zero and deliver our 25-year environmental plan. Now, many would argue that 2050 isn't soon enough, but at least they're making some steps in the right direction with this announcement. The Chair of Natural England, Tony Juniper, said, this ban on the sale of peat-based compost and work to phase out use in other areas is an essential step towards protecting these valuable natural assets and allowing for the recovery of degraded areas. Now the RSPB welcomed the plans but said they didn't go far enough. Emma Marsh, Executive Director of Digital Technology and Communications at the RSPB, said, whilst we welcome this announcement, we are concerned it does not meet the Climate Change Committee's advice to end all peat use and extraction by 2023. We are in the midst of a nature and climate emergency and this is a type of action we need to be seeing, especially when there are many peat-free alternatives available. It's a good step in the right direction, but we need to see this followed up with more decisions that protect our precious peatland. Andy Jasper, Head of Gardens and Partlands at National Trust said, This is very welcome news. For too long the world's precious climate-fighting peatlands have been eroded, so we are pleased to see the government taking action to ban the sale of peat for amateur gardeners. Peat is of far greater use to our society in our uplands, bogs and fens where it stores vast amount of carbon, nurtures wildlife, preserves archaeology and acts as a flood defence than it is in our bags of compost. But he said there was more work to be done and the government now needed to address the commercial use of peat. We're calling for a clear time frame and a commitment to work with the wider horticultural sector to reduce dependency, promote innovative alternatives and speed up the shift to a successful peat-free industry. Now this ban applies only in England because the sale of peat is a devolved matter. Now, Wales is expected to enact a similar ban by May 2024, but in Northern Ireland, proposals to phase out peat compost sales by 2025 were dropped from its peatland strategy, which was published earlier this month. And in Scotland, the SNP's 2021 election manifesto pledged to end the sale of peat-related gardening products, but as yet, no date for this has been set. So there we go. That's great news for England that the peat sales are going to be banned for personal use and hopefully discussions amongst the horticultural industry will also bring about that ban there soon so that we can start meeting our targets but at the moment it doesn't apply to Wales, Scotland or Northern Ireland so it'd be great to see progress there as well. So there we go folks, there's a couple of green news items that caught my eye and hopefully you found them interesting too. One was that England's gardeners are going to be banned from using peat-based compost and the other was that Waitrose are going to be scrapping their best before dates on fruit and vegetables. Well I hope you found that interesting, if you did then please click the like button down below and leave your comments. Let me know what you think of the move by Waitrose to scrap the best before dates and also if you've got any thoughts on the banning of peat-based compost. What alternatives are you using? Now I have recorded a video before about Melcor compost and they're peat free so uh, I'll include a link up above for you to take a look at that. And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well thanks for watching folks, until next time, bye!